the inevitable has happened. Fail to proceed. You might assume that whatever it is that's caused this thing to not work anymore is going to be something big and complicated and complex and expensive. And it's actually not. But it's still not a great time. Uh, I'll show you the problem first, what rendered this car immobile so I couldn't drive it and I had to take a Saxo to Botley to get a part for the Tomato, which meant I had to drive like a Saxo driver. Chav power! You can take the driver out of the Saxo, but you can't take the Saxo out of the driver. So what manner of awfulness has happened to this? Observe. It's leaking. That is coolant. And what's happened is that cable tie is on there to try and keep the thing together. If I squeeze these two here. Nope, not that one there, sorry. Yeah, there we go. And oh. The little bit on the end of that is broken off and it's stuck in there. So basically that's uh I'm guessing this will come from the size of it you'd think that was a heater pipe or something oh it comes from that i don't even know what that is there's there's 10 ton of stuff down there so this is like a swell pot it's like an evaporation chamber so like as coolant passes it'll allow air to get caught in this because it's a bit higher and then that just go back to the header tank over there so it just burps itself it keeps this circuit here free of air fine although it's actually lower than that bit Ah, but if it flows that way, it will pass this first. Okay, fine. Now that green seal in there is one I put in the other day in a desperate attempt to try and get it to bung up enough to limp it home. And in fairness, it did limp home. So I'm going to try and get this seal back out. That's not too bad. Probably reuse it. Um, and then try and get the remains of the pipe out without bits of uh, plastic dropping into the cooling system because this is going to be I don't want to take the whole thing off because oh, oh I think we got it there we go look at the state of that there we go okay that's that's gone we don't need to inspect that bits of plastic bits of corrosion but on the whole a quick wipe in there and that should be okay all right, so it's clicked into, oh, there we go, clicked into there, and it's there, and there, and then up on the, uh, up on the top here, it's just a case of pushing this down, which splays the little clips apart, and wiggling it out. And that one's broken as well. And it's leaking now. Damn. I've not considered that. Ah, right. So, yeah, okay. Now I have a problem. Right. <laughs> Just got a bit of pipe there. There you go. Ain't going to leak out of that, is it? It'll have to go pretty high. So, that's broken out as well. That's fantastic. Damn it. Come on. I don't want to damage the tank. I do actually have a new tank. So you're thinking, why don't you just fit... There we go. Why don't you just fit that? Well, I'm not going to yet for a couple of reasons, which we'll go into in a minute. Yeah. So I do have a new bottle, but I'm not going to try and fit that now because I don't have enough time to prat around if this breaks, although that one will actually be similar money because it's going to be it's the same kind of length but I'm not prattling around with that just yet because the C6 is not your average Citroen I'd have to go to the dealer to get this part because you can't buy them aftermarket you would assume that I had not been to the dealer to buy a part because I'm apparently still walking unaided um, but that is not the case I've been to the dealer I have the part, £12.54. 
Not bad. It's taken a few days to get it, but £12.54. Well, I hope that's the right part. Yeah, it looks it. Ooh, unboxing. Look at this. Ooh, shiny. Look, here we go. For reference, if anyone else has this issue, part number 1351 Lima November. It is an, uh, it's a rack sortie oud. I am int four. The, uh, the, basically, this pipe, I mean, to be honest, modern cars, I know they're more complex in many ways, but it just clicks on. And it's got an O-ring fitted at both ends. And basically what's broken on this one, it's this end that broke first. This O-ring uh, obviously wasn't sealing anymore because this little spigot at the bottom broke off. So all I need to do, I'm going to put a little bit of encouragement jelly on it. Just in case there's anything that is going to upset it when I push it in. Because I'm doing this without really... It's a bit of a hurry. Bit of a rushed one. I've stupidly agreed to do a 24 hour live stream and I'm having to prepare for that. And then it should simply be okay. I don't know. I can pinch the clips off. Oh, okay. So... They will go. Helps if I have it around the right way. That will go on there, like, just get a bit of that jelly round. There you go, that's pushed and clicked. And then that clicks there. That's supposed to click there, it has. And then if I remove this, it hopefully stop leaking now. But it isn't. There we go, I'm withdrawing it faster than it can leak. Yeah, you might be wondering why I'm making such a song and dance out of this. Why am I making such a big deal? This is a, a part that's cost £12.54 on a car that's very complex and could have been a lot worse. I should take that as a win, shouldn't I? Especially when you consider that this has been leaking since I went on holiday. In fact, no, before I went on holiday. Because there was a stain around there and I thought nothing of it. There we go. There we go. So that's actually gone around France and hit temperatures of whatever it was over there, 38 degrees at times. And could have quite easily blown off at any minute. So, fair play to you, C6. You deserve respect. But that's not the problem. Let's just get this back in here and I'll explain. So that goes on like, and that's it. All right. One new pipe fitted. Yeah, that was leaking um, before, but also I'd forgotten I'd bodged the radiator. So you can see there's a leak, and you might not be able to see it. Just down there, something's fallen over. Yeah, there was a there's a leak on the top of the radiator, and this bleed screw is broken. And I got another one off another guy online who very help, uh, very kindly sent me another one, um, and that's broken. <laughs> when it went in there, as soon as it went in, it broke because it's old plastic. So the radiator is weeping as well, uh, which isn't ideal. But this one would have been much worse. And uh, luckily, I mean, it lose it lost so much coolant. We had to keep topping it up when we were on holiday. I knew that it was something somewhere, but I hadn't considered that the end of the pipe might have broken off. So this could have left me really stranded, and it didn't. So yeah, well done C6. Right. So we'll cover that back up for now. This is why I forgot I dodged it, because although well, this is actually broken. There's supposed to be a clip in here that holds that on. But that goes... Sort of goes like that it's supposed to ish but the clip's broken so it kind of just sits around loose there you go I'll kind of have it like that well that all sounded really happy didn't it so there was something down there's got coolant in it when it shouldn't so it's squeaking Coolant needs topping up again. I'll go and get some of that. 
Shut up. All right, I'll top the coolant up and make sure that's not leaking. All right. And the bleed point up here, I'll just make sure there's coolant there. There is, yes. Well, I'll just let it warm up, pressurise to make sure this isn't going to leak on me. This pipe hasn't made me think, oh, I shouldn't be owning a Citroen C6. I love my Citroen C6, but I, I don't think it's right to be driving it. I don't think it's right for me to have it, or not have it necessarily, but use it. Uh, I'll explain. You see, it's a problem numero uno. You will note, in fact, I'll tell you quickly before I say anything else, this screen here, this is your, uh, this is your sort of your onboard computer and you've got two gauges there you've got coolant and oil temperature which is nice nice to have an oil temperature gauge um, and when we were on holiday it was going up above these two little blocks here and the fan was going non-stop but because it was about a million and five degrees I just assumed it was because it was actually hot but it wasn't it's because it was running low on coolant and of course I've been topping it up recently thinking hang on there is a coolant leak somewhere I need to get on top of this obviously i found the leak and i've been sort of on top of it and monitoring it but i know it's been leaking and it leaks a surprisingly well you've seen how much it leaks once that pipe off uh and basically what i've been doing is topping it up and then if i've heard the fans coming on if i think oh, the fans are going a bit then i know i need to top it up because there is no low level warning light in this car and it sounds absolutely stupid and that is a subject i was going to revisit in this car and may still do but recently we went out, I went home from work the other night trying to demist it because it all steamed up because the weather started coming in and it wouldn't blow hot air. So that's how low the coolant had got. The heater stopped working, uh, which is generally quite bad. I mean, you do that in a K-series Rover, you're dead. Well, you're not, but the engine is. So yeah, fair play C6, you are plodding on once more. I'm waiting for this thing to warm up a bit. Well, while I'm waiting for it to warm up, I'll go on to my next problem. This is my trip computer. So you can see you've got the first stage there, which is how many miles I've got left on this three bars of fuel. The middle one is how many, how much MPG I've averaged in the last 2,903 miles. So that includes the trip to France and the trip to Brands Hatch, which is a long journey for this car. So that's fine. That's a long, those are longer distance and that's mixed in with town driving. So it's manage an average 33.7 to the gallon at average 34 miles an hour so i don't think that's horrendously bad i haven't looked at the book figures i will look at the book figures now and see what citroen reckon it should be doing at 34 miles an hour roughly um I'll, they would class that as urban so we'll see what they say but that isn't a true representation because that's an average speed and the second window which you get another um screen if you like another uh trip computer recording uh, thing is that so for the last 175 miles that's that I reset that last time I put fuel in it it has averaged 18 miles an hour and that so that is just doing the kind of work it normally does and that's just I know it's not ideal for the car but that is what I do that I am averaging 18 miles an hour in my life how much longer is my life taking um, and it's averaging 24.6 to the gallon 24 well that will be going down because i'm running the engine now and not going anywhere now while i ponder that i'm just looking in the coolant to see if it drops and it hasn't it does need to drop a bit because um i've overfilled it slightly thinking it would burp itself i'll wait for the thermostat to open and it might do but this doesn't seem to be leaking that's good 
if I put the cap on, it's got more chance of pressurising and putting that under a bit of strain. So I'll just put the cap back on. There we go. I wasn't going the wrong way. I was trying to find the thread. Not an idiot. Getting diesels to warm up. Honestly. It still hasn't got... Come on! Does sound cool. I like big diesels. I'm waiting for it to warm up. That number there... CJ means Wren, so it was built in Wren. 11 120 so 11 120 as so they call it the rp number so that basically translates to a date sometime in 2007 so the car was built in 2007 in wren uh, that will tell you the exact day um, tire pressures original tire sizes oh i can never spit fire is it coming over there you go Yeah, the Spitfire lives over the road. Every weekend you hear it go up. Ah, right, there we go, right. The oil pressure, the oil temperature is going up higher than the water temperature at the moment. That's good. That's brilliant. But it's starting to go up. Sorry, I got distracted by a Spitfire. I reckon I've got a tiny leak an exhaust round there somewhere because when I was revving it, I don't think we'll be able to see it. Ooh, something's spraying out. What is that? Something's spraying. Is that coolant as well? Right, I think we can assume that this isn't leaking. Now I'm worried about what was in there. What was that? This is a problem you've got when you've got a car like this. There's so much in that area that that could be. I think it's coolant. The problem you've got is it could be, oh, it could be uh, diesel because these are diesel pipes and there's an injector rail and everything under there. Uh, it could be coolant because the thermostat housing is under here, I believe. I haven't actually looked, but it's been done this apparently. Let's see, it had a new one not long before I got it. I've got a horrible feeling that's probably what it is. But then this pipe here, which I would imagine is something to do with the EGR, that was blowing something up here as well. And it only seems to do it when you've got it on full chat, when you're loading it up. And it's not boost or anything because, as I say, it's spraying out a load of. And it's not oil, that is coolant. Yeah, that is coolant. There we go. Out of sight, out of mind. That's how it works, right? <sighs> yeah, so that's pretty much where things um, stand with the C6. So you're wondering why is it the end of the road? What's going on? That car costs a bomb to run. I do 10 miles a day at most. We're living in a world where diesel is 30p a litre more than fuel in the UK anyway. It's 30p a litre more than petrol, despite the fact it's cheaper to make than petrol. And that's the cheap diesel. 
that's not the super diesel that apparently I should be putting in that thing because otherwise the DPFs will just go and get blocked up. And you think, okay, so it's one pound 92 a litre or something stupid at the moment, but it's doing 24 to the gallon. And I'm starting to struggle there because I'm thinking, well, you're not doing many miles, granted, but if you have something like, take as an example, uh, 107 slash Igo slash C1, one of those, the fuel on one of them, you're gonna get 45 to the gallon. 40, 45 to the gallon, real world, not, you know, yeah, you could probably go on a run and get some stupidly high amount, but real world, stop, start traffic, cold mornings, de-icing, all the rubbish that goes on, you're looking about 40 to 45 to the gallon. At 30p a litre less in fuel straight away, there's a saving there. Then you consider the tax or road fund license or whatever we call it in this country. One of those cars costs nearly 50% less to tax, tax per year than the C6 does per month. Yeah, despite the fact that when you put it in for an MOT, the gas tester doesn't even realize it's in a car. That's how clean it is. So you think, right, hang on. £30 a year, or what is effectively nearly sort of, oh, I don't even know what they are a year. I think it's £612 a year. I think that's what it is. That is half the stainless exhaust for a Clement. That is a set of valves for an SM. About 250 quid for inlets and 250 quid for exhaust. I know. Don't even... I know. But that's a set of solid stainless valves for one of those. And in the last week, I've been driving the Saxo um, around. I've been using that as my daily car. And yes, okay, I love the C6. And the C6 is cool. And I love driving it and everything like that. But the Saxo still got me to work and back except it did it more cheaply and it was easier in traffic and it was easier to park at home at night. It did everything else the same. It wasn't uncomfortable. I know lots of cars are. I can't have a car that's uncomfortable. I can't have a car that rides badly, but Saxos don't. They ride for what they are. Everything's relative, but for what they are, they ride pretty well. It doesn't have air con, admittedly, and I'm going to think, oh, and in the summer you're going to miss that, but then neither did the C6 because it wasn't working. I've just had to take a new phone contract out this morning, which is going up 15 quid a month. I know you don't have to do that, but for the sort of, well, for my needs and for what I do on here and, you know, the fact I needed a phone with wireless charging because my phones get so dirty and so grubby that the charge ports get full up of dust and it just wrecks the USB-C chargers. Uh, and, and it's happened three, three phones on the trot. And to be honest, the one I've got now works so well it's not even an expensive phone. It's an Oppo Find X2 Neo, which is the second lowest on their X2 range. It works perfectly. The battery life has died a little bit. The phone works beautifully. It's still in good condition, visually. The picture's amazing. The sound's great. It's fast as anything It's fast for what I need. So I would have kept it if it were wireless, because if it were wireless, I wouldn't have to be using the charge port and slowly rubbing the contacts away on the circuit board. So a wireless phone is a bit more. Wireless charging phone, 40 quid a month. I've ordered it now. Hopefully that will come before the live stream because if it doesn't, that's going to be a pretty quiet live stream. So that's an extra 15 quid a month straight away. And I'm spending 56 pound a month or whatever on car tax for a car that costs a bomb to run in fuel and will probably need some sort of cooling issue sorted in the V of the engine because that, that pipe there may be 12 quid and it's broken, but the, all the other pipes, all the other plastics in that engine bay are the same age. That one was cheap. What if the next one's not? And nothing's easy to fix. The gearbox still isn't fully finished. It drives okay. It's, it's, it's usable now. It's, it's a bit of a pain to park it and it can be a bit of a pain to pull away. It's a little bit laggy. It's not as I mean, I think they are anyway, but 
it's it's good enough it changes up gears smoothly on the move now it doesn't bang going into reverse i've uh, i did another reset and the bang when you put it into reverse is gone it just smoothly engages now so all the violence has gone out of it but it eats as i say it eats tires it eats fuel it's a fussy car and i love it but should your fussy car be your everyday car I've got a horrible feeling that my C6 days are numbered. But the thing is, it's not worth anything. There's a nice black C6 up for sale at the moment in London. Um, two and a half thousand he's got it out for. And it's same sort of mileage as that. It's probably bodily a little bit more tidy than that. It's got the dark interior, which... <sighs> yeah, pros and cons either way. The, uh, the light interior looks quite funky. I mean, it looks, also looks quite old man, but it, it does look quite good it's very airy quite a relaxing place to be but at the same time it gets horrendously dirty another reason why i feel guilty about having the c6 because i'm grubby when i come home from work i'm covered in muck and the car just gets filthy and i have to keep cleaning it and it just gets dirty so quickly so as the one in london black interior would be better but then of course it is still that dirty it's just you can't see it i'm stuck i got a horrible feeling that i'm gonna i can't justify the c6 We've got, th we've got three cars on the road, as stupid as that sounds. We've got an S-Max, which is a 2.5 turbo, and that is the family bus. And, you know, we've got a family of five, so you need something that's got a bit of space in it. That's quite thirsty, but it runs on petrol, and you can put E10 in it, it's fine. So it's a bit cheaper from that point of view. Economy is about the same as the C6 round town, but on a run, it's a fair bit worse. The C6 is decent on a run. It's nice and frugal on a run. You'll get 40 to the gallon at 80 mile an hour on cruise control. It's, it's pretty good, genuinely quite good. It's, it is the perfect mile muncher, but I don't munch miles. I don't do it. So it's like, it's the, the one thing that car is perfect at, I don't do. And the one thing it's bad at, I do do a lot of. Head. Oh yeah, so we've got the S-Max and there's the Saxo, which neither of those cars are mine for a start. Um, the Saxo is, is my wife's, she's had it many years, she loves it dearly, but she uses it. Um, she, when she goes to work, if she drives, she can walk sometimes, but if she doesn't, she drives. And if she drives, the parking spaces are very small. The S-Max is quite big, not compared to modern SUVs, but even so, it's, it's easy to park a Saxo, piece of cake. S Max, no, it's a pain. And if you get there late and the spaces are gone, you're having a bad time. So sometimes she uses the Saxo, but then she would use that just for daily stuff, for shopping, because it's, it's fairly cheap to run. Sort of low 30s to the gallon, because it's got a VTS engine in it. So it's low 30s to the gallon. So the alternative, if I used that every day, she wouldn't have it. If I used the S Max every day, I wouldn't be in much of a different situation to what I'm in now. Maybe very slightly better off. But the S-Max rusts like anything, because it's a Ford. So the more I drive that, the rustier that's going to get, especially over the winter. So we try and limit the miles on that. You can say that running costs, why have you got so many cars? Well, insurance is covered on a trade policy. So all I do is, all I have to pay for is the tax. The tax on the S-Max isn't amazing. It's not as bad as the C6. It's about £34 a month, I think. Um, and the Saxo, not a lot less, because it's pre-2001 and 1600cc. So it's not that cheap to tax that. So I'd be looking at something, if I were to replace the C6, sub 1400cc, if it's before 2001, definitely sub 1400cc. And if it's after 2001, as small as I can get, basically. I fancy a three cylinder. I've never owned a three cylinder car before, but I don't really like any of the little three cylinder cars out there. You know, I like, I, don't, I quite like Daihatsu's, but the, the grief that the hub nuts are having, trying to get parts for that one, um, and I don't really like the look of many of them. Not m m not my cup of tea. I wouldn't say they were the best looking cars. Uh, you made some cool looking cars, Daihatsu, but I don't really see anything in their modern catalog that jumps out at me. I'm not really mad on the C1s and everything like that. Who knows? I don't know. Quite like Audi A2s, but I remember watching a Hubnut video and he drove one and said it was awful. So. Don't know. I'm waffling now, so I'm just upset. So I'm going to end it, and that's where the C6 was. We started the video with a cheap, a cheap, easy fix. I have fixed it. I can drive it home. 
But if I floor it, it sprays something else out, which looks like coolant from a much more expensive area of the engine where they commonly fail. Brilliant. Right, that'll do. Any suggestions for any interesting cars that are very cheap? My, my criteria is very simple. It has to be cheap to run, very cheap to run. It has to have be comfortable, good suspension. And I want velour. I want a velour interior. And I don't want it to look like a Daihatsu move. Right, that's it. So yeah, um, bit of a bum note to uh, end it on. Next video will be an update on uh, the live stream. Oh yeah, the live stream. Better mention that now. That, that's it, that's, that's all there was. I'll just put that at the end.